If we talking looks, sound hooks, I'm the littest one. Just sent your wifey five a So fresh and fresh and clean. I keep it viewed on that Don Julio. Cause I be eating weed. Ow. You guys, what's motherfucking up? We back today with my motherfucking new endeavor. This is my baby, my little pilot. Um, I had this idea a couple weeks ago when I was high, and then I'm one of those people, if I keep something on my mind, especially if I'm high, because I be forgetting shit when I'm high sometimes, I ain't even gonna lie. But um, if I remember it, oh yeah, I'm finna, you know, try to put this shit to fruition. And also with me being 25, I'm just like, I'm in that place where I'm like, F it, I'm not finna like, sometimes as a content creator, you feel like you need to reach certain ceilings to do certain things. Um, and as a musician, as a person who like is more so on a local level, you feel like you need to wait till you do this, wait till you do that. And with certain things, I'm never gonna change. Like, I'm not gonna lie, if my music does not take off mainstream, I'll probably never make an album. Am I gonna make mixtapes that I can profit off of and original content? Yes, but I'll probably never make a formal album if my career does not take off. That's just how I personally feel. Um, I feel like albums are like mainstream, you know what I'm saying? That's just me personally. Um, not knocking anybody that puts albums out that are more so local, but that's just my opinion. Um, so that's how I govern. I'm not going to change something like that, but you know what I'm saying? In terms of like, you know, being scared to put out certain stuff or throw certain content out there. Like some people, I actually like, I ain't going to lie on TikTok. I be saying some stuff that it's not controversial, but it's the ugly truth and people hate ugly truths. So I be, I be expecting a lot of like, Kickback, And I mean, I know as you get bigger, then you'll start to see more of it. I'm still relatively small on there, but most of the people be fucking what I'm saying. Or at least it don't be people who, if they don't fuck with it, ain't nobody tried me yet. <laughs> and that's good for them, because I'll find your motherfucking IP address, bitch. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm a crazy ass. So at any rate, with that being said, uh, I'm 25. I want to be embracing more stuff. My goofiness, my quirkiness, my funniness, my... um vulnerability you know when I'm high I'm like very vulnerable and very like honest and oh, I'm a little scared I ain't gonna lie but I think this will be a good thing I'm gonna try this out I'm just doing eight episodes for the month of March and I want to do it as like a trial basis and see how it goes see how the engagement is I kind of want to give it about two to three months to breathe and grow a little legs but um, if I see the engagement is up, you know, I'm going to put that accountability in y'all's hands as listen, listeners, especially for my, like, YouTube crowd. Like, please like the video. Leave comments. Engage. I want to see that. Like, I love that as a creator. Um, and I love it when, like, my creators are create. Yeah, the creators that I follow, they give me their same, you know what I'm saying? That same energy like earlier my was world and I had a little nice interaction. I shared her video about colorism. And, or dark skin erasure or something of that sort and um she gave african americans props on you know what i'm saying a lot of stuff and i just it's nice to i love diaspora black people but because i know there's a war going on between us i don't know if the ones that i support diasporically speaking are for african americans so it was nice to see her not only be for us but defend us and you know what I'm saying? You keep it real. On both sides, there is definitely um, dirt being thrown on each name. But at the end of the day, we also niggas. <laughs> but nah, for real. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I like that me and her, her and I had that interaction. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we just need to get better at black people as black people as giving each other props. You know what I'm saying? Stop being crap in a barrel as motherfuckers. Like I be noticing a lot of y'all is haters. Like. And I hate it because I love being black. I actually have an episode um, where I'm going to talk more about my views on blackness and the current days that we are living in now. But at any rate, with that being said, let me go ahead and get to the damn video while I'm, you know, explaining every damn episode. <laughs> Bruh, like, child, just be rambling. But no, I'm also embracing that, embracing that too. Like, you know, I'm actually having couple mental health issues and right now I'm not able to take care of them so my articulation has kind of suffered um because of that but I'm definitely trying to keep it as coherent as possible and um also um what else was I about to say I cannot remember I just lost it but 
Oh, excuse me. Nonetheless, I definitely want to um, assess this situation and see if this is something that could take off. Just give it a chance. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to, you know, if I have content that I want to put out, I want to put it out. I'm not worried about, I mean, engagement is important. Let's not be coy, but it's not the most important thing, you know? And I believe that quality will find who it needs to find. You know what I'm saying? Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the first half of Black Edition Unpopular Opinions. So in no particular order, my first unpopular opinion is the rap duo City Girls are monumental. If ever you needed an example of the Black ghetto girl and I say that because I mean that's that's what people categorize them and I mean to be honest you know what I'm saying I mean let's let's keep it real they are they, they, they is ghetto but I, I love their ghetto asses I do like I like to see black people in all aesthetics you know what I'm saying and I'll never be good, mad at a hood girl just trying to win like I'll never be mad about that you know JT and Carisha are not perfect don't get me wrong but um I definitely, overall, I've seen their growth. I saw JT, well, I saw JT's interview the other day, and I seen her growth. And Young Miami, she's still figuring stuff out, you know. And I'm not saying that to be shady. I, I'm just, girl, you didn't have to tell us that you, the pen, the child, I, I bet your little sister want to do it like me. I bet your little brother trying to piss on me. Like, that was, she should have kept that. Let me stop. At any rate, child, I believe that Jesus is black. Um, when I think about it, I really think that God is a black woman. Like, to be honest, everything originates from black women. Um, black women are the essence of this fucking earth. I don't care what nobody says, and I'm not changing that. Um, they are the Eve. They literally are the Eve of our world. I feel like, and or at least our planet, I feel like, and um, really and truly, if you look into the dynamics between them and black men, black men definitely are the atoms. Child, actually, niggas be the serpents. Oh my God. Y'all ain't ready for that, though. But at any rate, um, back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, it just, it makes sense to me. Like, everything originated from black people. Black people all originated. Everything originated from Africa, the motherland. We call it the motherland for a reason. Like, I believe, yeah. I believe if God was a real thing, it would be a black woman. Like, I just believe that. It just makes sense to me. Um, next unpopular opinion. I think the way we discuss colorism as black men in the present is very flawed. But, uh... My light skin is not the same as Boris Kojo's light skin or Michael Ely's light skin, and their light skins aren't the same. So it's it's different, you know. I think, again, you can't do blanket statements with colorism because you have to take into effect features, um, the tone of skin, um, the cue like specifics, um, the features as well, um, the hair texture. Like it's just it's 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 a well-rounded conversation. It's a it's a um, base one, base three, home run conversation. You can't just take it at um, face value. Um, just because I like pepper, it doesn't mean I don't like salt, child. And if I don't, like, I honestly feel like we do a disservice. I hate living by the laundry room. It's so aggravating. But I feel like we do a disservice to ourselves as black people with the whole, like, reverse racism shit. Because first of all, that shit is not real. Um, can anybody be prejudiced? Absolutely. But racism, no. And I'm not arguing that nobody, you can suck a dick. I'm not, I'm just, there, we live two different lives. Earlier, I was listening to one of my white managers talk about her brother, who's been in jail 10 times and didn't face any serious time last time that he went. That is privilege in and of itself, that you can keep being a menace to society and you keep getting thrown in and out of jail. Most black men are getting killed. Yeah. It's a privilege in and of itself. Black women are getting shunned for the way that their hair grows out of their head. To the point where their own men didn't even ate that shit up. 
and sit here rapping about some fucking curls and light skin and shit. Like, y'all, black, white men don't have self hate issues like black men do. Like, they haven't, and, and some of that is conditioning, but for some of y'all, I'm just holding y'all. Like, at this point, I feel like white people created these problems and we perpetuating them. So, I, I'm a little less lenient on the grace that I extend because I feel like at this point, it's enough research out to decondition, recondition, or uncondition your mind. White people don't have to go through that. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't want to hear it with the reverse racism shit. But at any rate, going back to what I was saying, pro-black is not anti-white. And if somebody is anti-white and they're black, bitch, your fucking granddaddy watched your mind get hung while his balls was getting chopped off. So, not in place. I embrace black mediocrity to an extent. To an extent. Now, if it's just bad and trash, I'm not going to, like, I'll just be quiet. And I realized that I think we need to get more on code about black people as that, too. Like, just be quiet. You know what I'm saying? Other races don't really point out their mediocrity. Like, I can think of one little pop girly now. I've done, done a lot of more remixes on some of my mixtapes with her. She's an icon in her own right. But vocally, she's not the best. However, you would never hear her race of women saying that. They just... They, are, they have a code, and we as black people lack that. And I would like to see more of that. Now, I'm saying black mediocrity. If you just fucking terrible, if you can't fucking say, that's one thing. No. On to my next unpopular opinion. Whew, Lord, this one is going to spark a flame. All right. So, I feel like, especially the current black men and black women of today, I feel like black men are actually more emotional than black women. Um, when I look at these Nick sales, um, even when I look at black men and black women's intercourse, like on Twitter or discourse on like, not intercourse, child, but yeah, their discourse on like Instagram and Twitter, like the way that black men handle black women and talk to them is so, dif it's so fucking disgusting. It's nasty. It really is nasty piece of work. Oh, my next opinion I'm a pissed off black women too. I'm sorry. The sleepwear should stay in bed. I, 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 I do not. I didn't like how Monique went about it with the bonnet situation, but I don't disagree with her. Um, I am a person who wants to see better representation for black people. So that means the do rags need to stay in the house. The bonnets need to stay in the house. The pants sagging need to stay in the house. And I'm one of those people like. I have done so, I've done too much work of decolonizing my mind to sit here and feel triggered because y'all call that Eurocentric. I don't care. I really don't. I've been doing content on the black community since 2017. I'm not folding on that. I've done too much unconditioning of my mind and I don't feel it's a Eurocentric thing. I think I just want to see better imagery of black people collectively as a whole in our day-to-day -day life, as well as in the art that we consume, as well as in the figures of celebrity that we do hold up. All right, and my last unpopular opinion is we will never get anywhere as black people. I feel like black people do not keep the same energy um, depending on who it is they'll change their view. Um, it's embarrassing when I see the reactions to monsters like R. Kelly. Um, when I see the excuses from people who are fans of like Chris Brown and other problematic black male artists. And especially with black men, I've noticed we don't really like to hold them accountable. Um, anytime you do, it's, you're attacking a black man. I'm so sick of that damn shit. It's so fucking emotional. That's why I said y'all are more emotional than black women. Like black women, I've noticed they'll have conversations and actually hold each other accountable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they still got issues to work through too, but hey, a woman is a reflection of a man as far as patriarchy and community goes. So, hey, if black women got shit to work on, I don't know why black men walk around like they shit don't stink. Y'all niggas be having some of the most nasty motherfucking attitudes I've ever fucking seen. Especially for men who aren't your idea of manhood. But we'll definitely get into that on one of the... Hey, you guys, if you would like to hear the rest of this podcast, please check me out on anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other podcasting platforms. Thank you for listening.